Hi right, Brent, we're just going to talk through our skinning and gutting some rabbits that we've caught um, in preparation for eating. Um, so I'll just talk you through the process. I can't pro profess to be an expert by many means and I think different people probably have different ways of doing it. Um, but I'll show you the way, the way I do it. So first thing first, if I've got a few to do I just like to be prepared. You want a good solid sort of block of wood for your chopping board. Uh, you've got your knives laid out, so you want a good heavy cleaver, I just use that for taking off the head and uh, limbs. Um, that's a skinning knife there with that nice, nice curved blade. Uh, and the little one there I just use for, for nicking through, through into the stomach cavity. Um, and of course just to always make sure your knives are sharp because um, it just makes the whole process a lot easier. Um, what I'll do once I've finished with the carcass, the clean meat goes back on this tray. The offal that I take out, I keep some for the ferret, so that goes into that ferret bowl. Um, and the rubbish, I've got another bucket down the side here, so I can just discard that straight away into that bucket. And before I start, what I like to do um, is just give, give the rabbit a bit of a dunking, so that its fur is nice and wet. And what I just find that helps with is it stops the um, the fur coming off and sticking to the meat uh, as you're gutting it. So it just helps it keep a little bit cleaner. As I say, I'm sure different people have different ways of doing it. Uh, so I'll start with the fine, a nice fine sharp knife. And what I'm looking for is just at the bottom of the rib cage there. I'll just pick up the pick up the skin and just make a, a small incision there. Now that you've got to be careful here because you want to pierce the skin but you don't want to pierce the gut uh, so once I've got a little nick what I'll try and do is get two fingers inside and I can then use them to just hold the skin away from the away from the gut as I open up this cavity so just uh, just as a word of safety obviously you're using very very sharp knives here and you just want to make sure that um, you're not going to cut cut yourself so the best thing is always to cut away from yourself um, and also make sure your knives are nice and sharp because uh, as any chef will tell you you're more far more likely to cut yourself if you're forcing your way through with a blunt knife rather than a nice sharp one you can just take it nice and gently down the body cavity like this as I say I mean I, I'm no butcher but by going slowly and carefully I can just make sure I get there in the end. So different people will uh, treat treat their meat differently. Some people might hang rabbit um, for a short while. Uh, might you know if they prefer more gamey flavour. Uh, personally, I, I prefer I generally deal them straight away and um, get them ready for eating straight away. So we've got the body cavity open there. What I'll do is grab that bucket for my offal. So you can see we've not, not pierced the gut, which is what we want, because that can, can make a bit of a mess. And it's just a simple case of removing this apple body cavity, dumping it in the, in the bucket we have waiting there. Pull all of this out. So that's all the gut and intestine that we've taken out there. That's, that's literally just, just wasted. We don't use that at all. Uh, but what we can start to do is that's... A kidney there so these sit at the back just alongside the spine at the back of the body cavity so that's the two kidneys and um, they're quite nice just pan fried or in a pie something like that um, I like to reserve a few for the uh, for the ferrets because they're quite appreciative now we start to go in a bit further up into the gut cavity that's the stomach remove that one that's a bit of liver there so the liver is this kind of leafy dark red organ again ferrets love that that's the rest of the it's the rest of the liver there again that's that's perfectly edible and that's um pan fries lovely or goes in a pie again very nicely so you can see you do get quite quite a bit so if you've got a few rabbits you can actually you know the offal is quite quite worthwhile so it's just a diaphragm coming away okay bin that just go up into the lung cavity so just pull that out so these are the lungs or some some people call them the lights again 
ferrets will have those. And that's the heart. Again, that's per perfectly edible. But I, uh, I like to save that for the ferrets as a, as a little treat. Okay. So once we've got, got the guts out, Graham. What I then like to do is just take the limbs and the head. Um, so you're just aiming for sort of joint. You want to keep that, obviously the back legs in particular, some nice meat on there. So you tend to aim for about the sort of knee joint. And it's just, you want a nice heavy cleaver, nice, nice sharp blade. And you just want a good heavy chop. Again with the front limbs. And finally just the head. Okay, and now we can start to tackle the skin. And this is where a, a, a skinning blade with a nice, nice sharp uh, curved blade just helps you take that skin away from the flesh. And you just gently just keep nicking it away. And the easiest way I've found to do it is take it away from the back legs. You've got this, this bit that they call, it's almost like a skin flap, but that's uh, perfectly edible so we don't like to waste that so you can take that away from the skin up the side and you'll see with a skinning knife you can just rub it against the skin and that flesh just comes away very easily with the back legs you can tuck your fingers in and roll your knuckles and by just slipping that skinning knife in that gap between the you just gradually work that skin off Yep, so Graham, once you've uh, got your skinned rabbit, you know, some, some people might portion it up. I tend to just leave them whole, to be honest, and that they freeze down very well. Uh, so you can freeze them and use them for, a, for another day. Um, I think my favourite way of cooking them is uh, slow cooking. Um, you get the occasional tough rabbit. The older animals can be a little tougher. Um, but, you know, nicely slow cooked. They're uh, very, very... Uh, very tender and you, you can do a lot with them really, a lot of stews, casseroles and so of course you know we always like to promote using as much of the animal as possible you know I never let any of the offal go to waste if we don't eat that that goes to the to the ferrets as well but you know some people even go as far as using the skin which can be which can be done um, I think it uh, requires a bit of effort but it's a case of sort of stretching it and curing it and you can uh, use it in I'm sure various fashionable items um, it's not something I've done myself but um, I think it's probably there's a certain element of skill there um, which I've not got but who knows in the future might be something that we look at uh, and so the nice thing as well about these ferreted rabbits of course is unlike shot rabbits um, it's a clean carcass there's no shot inside them um, which is something that butchers really like, you know, if you're going to move uh, or even sell some onto the butchers if you're getting enough of them you've got a lovely clean carcass, you don't have to worry about about shot being in, in the carcass at all um, so once we've worked that, fet, that skin off the back portion of the body all we can do now is just roll that skin down and that will just pull away should just come right off. Nice steady smooth pull and that is the, the finished rabbit carcass there, just a bit of cleaning. Um, I'll just give that a rinse afterwards and uh, it's ready to be frozen. So that's the finished uh, rabbit once it's, once it's prepared. Um, the two favourite ways I'd deal with this now, uh, my, my personal two favourite ways of cooking it, um, I'd either joint it so I'd take off the, the rear legs, separate the saddle, 
the rib cage, the shoulders and the front legs and what you can do, particularly if you've got a nice, young, quite tender rabbit, um, I pan fry it. The way I like to do it, I like to pan fry a bit of chorizo. Um, it's a nice fatty meat because the rabbit is quite lean in itself. So if you pan fry a bit, something a bit fatty like chorizo, let those oils leak out. Then you take your rabbit portions, pan fry them in the oil that's come out of the chorizo, um, brown them off in that oil, and then they'll go into a, to a slow cooker and you can put in the vegetables and, and the, the bits and the chorizo and you get a nice almost sort of Spanishy style rabbit stew. The other way I'd do it is um, I'd literally put the whole carcass into a stock, uh, particularly with older animals, and I'd slow cook it in the stock uh, for you know six to eight hours. I'd then let it cool. I'll take the carcass out and I'll pull the, the, the flesh from the carcass, almost like pulled pork. So you can pull the rabbit away and you get that nice sort of tender, you know, well cooked. Um, as I said, it's almost like pulled, pulled rabbit version of pulled pork. And you can then put that into your recipe, how you'd like to use it. That's a bit better if you've got slightly older animals that aren't quite so tender. So that's, the, that's my two favourite ways of cooking it. So that's the offal that I save for the ferrets. It's only respectful that uh, after they did some of the work catching them, they get the uh, some of the choice cuts. As you can see, they're they're desperate to get get their teeth into that. So they get their treat at the end of the day as well. They're a bit possessive with their food, so they'll grab it and run off. <laughs>